you're a Unity developer who's ever been confused about when to use coroutines versus async await, or wondered what the difference is between async and multi-threaded code, this video is for you. Today, I'm going to show you the fundamental difference between async and parallel execution, how async actually works under the hood, and give you a clear breakdown of the most common async options in Unity. Coroutines, tasks, unitasks, and awaitables. Oh, and I intentionally don't talk about promises or Rx. I might, but someday. <laughs> Not today. By the end, you'll know exactly which tool to reach for in any situation and what are their pros and cons. Because here's the thing, if you don't understand how async actually works in Unity, you'll keep running into mysterious bugs, you'll use the wrong tool for the job, and worst of all, you'll waste hours debugging issues that proper async knowledge would have prevented. So. Let's try to fix that, shall we? Let's clear up the most common misconception right away. Async and parallel are not the same thing. Async, or concurrent, means not blocking the thread while waiting for something. It's basically doing chunks of different work one after the other. Parallel execution, or multi-threading, means running multiple operations simultaneously on different CPU cores or threads. To understand async, we need to talk about CPU ticks. A CPU tick is a single cycle of the processor and modern CPUs run billions of them per second. During those cycles, each core executes a few instructions at a time while constantly switching between tasks, the operating system, background processes, and of course the million browser tabs you've got open. While it might seem like they're executed at the same time, if you look closely, you'll see that they're actually executed one by one. When you write async code outside Unity, you execute something and then say, I'm done for now. You're free to do other things this cycle. Remind me to continue the job on the next tick, or after a specific amount of time. Conceptually, it's similar to a frame in Unity, but on a much smaller scale. By the way, if you think about it, by using the update method, we actually write async code. We perform some work during a frame, then yield control to let other systems run, and resume when it's our turn again. So why would you want to write async code anyway? Because some operations take too long. If we let them run inside a single frame, everything else will be stuck waiting blocking the executing thread. And if that's Unity's main thread, animation freeze, input lags, and the whole game feels locked until the operation is done. There are three main types of async operations. First, waiting for something to finish on another thread. You might delegate heavy work to another thread and then wait for it to finish back on the main one. For example, calculating a path in a large, complex environment. That calculation can run on another thread across multiple frames while the main thread keeps running. Second waiting for something handled by another piece of hardware. A good example is a network request. When you send it, most of the work is handled by the network adapter. While that's happening, the CPU can relax. Third, splitting a complex task into multiple frames. Here's a familiar case. Have you ever seen loading screen freeze for a second or two before continuing as if nothing happened? Imagine spawning thousands of enemies during loading. Instead of doing it all in one frame, you can spread the work across multiple frames. The total loading time is about the same, but the experience feels smoother. And yes, that matters even during loading. During the early days, coroutines were Unity's answer to async programming. Now, I enumerator and yield return weren't invented for Unity. In C Sharp, they primarily used for iterating through collections. For example, you can create slices from other collections. Yield return means I'm done for now, but I'm saving the state. Next time you ask me, I'll continue the execution. A really handy feature. And Unity did something really clever with it. But that was roughly 20 years ago. For good and for bad. Here's how curtains work in Unity. Let's take a simple fade out over time effect. We define the return type as I enumerator slightly adjust the alpha of the canvas group, wait for the next frame with yield return now, and repeat until the specified duration has passed. Basically, here's what's happening. Each yield return pauses the coroutine and lets Unity decide when to resume it. 
With yield return now, that's simply the next frame. If you yield return another coroutine, Unity runs that one until it finishes and only then comes back to the original one. A common example is wait for seconds. You could replicate it by yield returning null in a loop until the given amount of time has passed. Let's talk about the pros and cons real quick. The pros. Coroutines are built into Unity. No packages and no setup is required. They also really easy to understand. Yield return simply means pause here. They have lots of built-in yield instructions. Wait for seconds, wait for end of frame, wait until, and coroutines are tied to game objects. You can stop them simply by destroying the game object they're started from. And here are the cones. Coroutines are tied to game objects. Destroying the game object also stops the coroutine. Sometimes that's convenient, but sometimes it's a pure nightmare. Another issue, you can't return values easily. And you can't use ref or out parameters either. If you need to return a value, you'll have to wrap it yourself, which means more work and more memory allocations. Lastly, error handling is kind of awkward. You can't have try-catch around yield statements. Don't get me wrong, you can still use try-catch, but you'll need to break it into multiple blocks. Next are tasks. In 2012, Microsoft introduced async await and the task parallel library as the industry standard way to handle async operations in C-sharp. Let's see how we can change the code to use tasks instead of curtains. All you need to do is change the return type to task, add the async keyword and replace the yield return with an await. Now I can also do this, a proper try-catch error handling, or even return the operation success value. In fact, any value. Here are the pros. Tasks are the industry standard. Almost every c -sharp developer knows them. So if you or someone in your team is coming from a non-Unity development, they'll be easier to understand than curtains. Another thing, you can actually return values from tasks. Also, the exception handling with try catch works as expected. Lastly, while not a big deal, but it comes built in, you can compose operations with task when all and task when any. So what about the cons? Well, tasks aren't optimized for Unity's game loop. They don't understand frames and can cause desynchronization. Task run spawn threads, which is dangerous in Unity. Most of Unity API can't work from non-main thread. Tasks also not fully supported in WebGL builds. Even a simple task delay will crush your build. And lastly, they allocate more memory than they should for a game engine. What we really need is something that understands Unity's frame-based timing, avoids allocations, and gives you full control. And that's exactly what Unitask does. Unitask is an open-source library by SciSharp that brings proper async away to Unity. It's designed specifically for Unity, with zero allocations and frame-perfect timing. And the best part? You don't have to change much in your code. In fact, you can await tasks inside Unitask and vice versa. Both follow the get awaiter pattern and are easily interchangeable. Additionally, Unitask has player loop timing options. You can await at different points in Unity's update cycle. You can also await curtains directly, and you can await Unity's async operations. And if that's not enough, it comes with tons of helpers. Delay frame, wait until, wait while, next frame, all zero allocation. The pros? It's zero allocation async await solution for Unity. While any async await state machine still allocates, Unitasks themselves don't allocate extra memory. You also have full control over player loop timings. You can await during the regular update loop or during fixed update, your choice. It can await curtains, async operations, tasks, awaitables. So if you're working with legacy or mixed code, Unitask unifies everything. It has task-like composability with methods like when all, when any, when each, and it has tracker window for debugging async operations. Personally, I've never actually used it, so I can't really recommend it, but it's there. And if you're new to async development, it can probably be helpful. So, the cones. It's a third-party library. For most, that's not an issue. But maybe your company has strict policies against third-party code. Or you've got that one so-called senior colleague whose factory settings make him oppose anything unfamiliar. 
Lastly, just like with tasks, developers who are used to coroutines sometimes struggle to wrap their heads around how async await works. So, it's a learning curve. In Unity 6, Unity introduced Awaitable, the official built-in async system. Actually, it was inspired by Unitask and in many ways copies it, which is a good thing if you ask me. Now, let's clear up some confusion. Awaitable is not a struct like Unitask. It's a class and it does allocate. However, it uses internal object pooling to keep those allocations to a minimum. Since awaitable is also an implementation of the getAwaiter pattern, the changes to the fadeout code are still minimal. Here's what you need to know about awaitable. It provides functionality similar to coroutines. Await next frame async instead of yield return now, plus equivalence for wait for seconds and end of frame. But that's about it. It's curtain level functionality wrapped in async syntax. The pros are pull the locations, which is better than standard tasks or coroutines. Built in lifecycle awareness. Your async operations stay perfectly in sync with the update loop. And it's official Unity solution. No external dependencies, it's just there, just like coroutines. The cones, well, it's an official Unity solution. Don't get me wrong, nothing against Unity. It's just closed source and baked into the editor. That means bug fixes only arrive with Unity updates, along with new bugs in other systems. And it's only available in Unity 6 and newer. If you can't upgrade, and there are plenty of reasons why you might not, you won't have access to awaitables. So which one should you use? For me, the answer is pretty clear. If it's not a Unity project, Use tasks, server code, desktop apps, command line tools, basically anything written in c -sharp but outside of Unity. If it's a Unity project, ask yourself one question. Can you use Unitasks? For me, that's always the default choice because it's the most feature complete and Unity optimized solution. If for some reason you can't use Unitask, you've got two options. Are you using Unity 6 or higher? Go with Awaitables. Using an older Unity version? Well, you don't really have a choice. Use curtains. Look, async programming isn't something you master in one video. But now you've got the foundation. In the next video, I'll try to show you how Unitasks work in practice and the mistakes to avoid while working with async await. If you want to see that and much more, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. You can also like this video if you want to. Keep on creating, and I'll see you in the next one.